I am Laura Dixon, and you are listening to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast, episode number 143, 30 Pounds Down in 90 Days with Sue. Welcome to the Naturally Thin for Life podcast. I'm going to teach you how to get out of your diet brain so that you too can be naturally thin for life. No counting, restricting, or obsessing. I am going to take the mystery out of it for you so that you can become naturally thin starting today. Are you ready? Let's do this. Hello, friends. Welcome to this week's podcast. I have a very special conversation between myself and Sue, who lost 30 pounds in 90 days. Like, come on, what is happening? How cool is this? So I just had to have her on the podcast because she has shared inside of the Naturally Thin for Life program time and time again that the process was so much easier than she had thought, how she had tried so many things before and she would lose 20 pounds and then gain that back and then 10 more and then lose weight again and then put it back on. The typical struggle that many of us have had. And she shares inside of the Naturally Thin for Life program how she just is continually blown away at how much easier it has been than she perceived that it was going to be. And so I asked her if she would come and share her journey with all of you so that she could share some of her wisdom and her thoughts to help all of you as well so that you can borrow some of her thoughts. You can see how she has worked through some of the obstacles that she has overcome to lose these 30 pounds in 90 days and have zero fear that it's going to come back. She shares in this episode, she says, I was my own obstacle. And I just thought it was so genius. And I want you to hear how deeply she believes that in this episode. Because I believe it so deeply too, we are our own obstacles. And when we learn how to see that and how to overcome them, we feel so infinite and powerful and limitless in ways that we never thought we were capable of. And she talks about how she's had this experience as well of just feeling like she's capable of so much more because she was able to completely shift her mindset and how she thinks about food and her body and her weight. And she also shares in this episode that I'm excited for all of you to hear how she made this time different for herself. She talks about working through a couple of plateaus in her weight loss journey. And listen, I still am like, this is so just a testament to her willingness to do the work. And we talk about the word, the work, because neither of us actually thinks that it feels like work, but to do the program, to do the process that she still lost 30 pounds in 90 days while working through a couple of quote unquote plateaus that she thought she had reached. And when she talks about this, you can hear how she shares that it it doesn't need to be perfect every day, how she still enjoys ice cream sometimes. And I remember coaching her in the program and she had gone and she was with some family and she had still lost weight being back with her family thinking she was going to put on weight because there was just so much food and it was a very food centric kind of experience, but that she didn't. And when she had that experience, she could see how powerful her mind was and that it wasn't actually the food controlling her. And she says how within just a week, she started to experience that sense of control around her relationship with food, which is all I want for all of you as well. So I'm so excited for you to hear Sue's journey. And when she shares this journey, she and I talk a little bit about the workbook and some of her favorite tools from inside the program so that you can hear what helped her and you can apply some of those tools for yourself as well. And I share a lot of those tools here on the podcast. And as we are talking about her journey, she talks about the workbook and really going all in with the workbook. So when you join the Naturally Thin for Life program, you get a hard copy of the workbook. We ship it anywhere in the world because having that workbook in front of you, seeing your brain on paper, and she talks about this as well, is the most rapid way to a permanent change. And so because I want more than anything for all of you to not only intellectualize and understand in your head how to be naturally thin, but I want you to have the lived experience of it, to have the skill of it. It's like reading a book on how to ride a bike and actually knowing how to ride the bike. I want you all to actually know how to ride the bike, to have that lifelong skill. 
And so right now we are offering you a 30-day trial of the Naturally Thin for Life program where you get a hard copy of the workbook so that you can see and have an experience similar to Sue where you can see how quickly you can feel in control of your relationship with food, how you are your only obstacle and how you have all of the tools you need to overcome anything that's happening in your life, in your brain, with your feelings, so that you have the calm control and the lifelong skill of being naturally thin. And the fastest way I know how to teach you how to do that, how to show you how to have that lived breathing experience in your own life is for you to implement the tools not only here on the podcast, but in the Naturally Thin for Life program and to use the workbook to do that. So right now we are offering that to you at lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash join is where you can go to find all of the details to take me up on 30 days of access to the program, including the workbook, so that you too can have an experience of the freedom and the peacefulness and the calm that Sue talks about in our conversation today. So I hope you enjoy this chat that I had with Sue. I hope you can take away so much from what she has said and apply that to your own life. And like we say in our episode today, if you don't quite believe in yourself enough yet, borrow our belief in you. All right. So I have Sue with us today. I am so excited to have everyone hear Sue and hear her journey. Every time she gets coached inside the program, I always think she's such a ray of sunshine and everybody else agrees because I see all the comments in the Q&A. So, Sue, I'm so glad that you are here. Do you want to share a little bit about yourself, maybe just some things about you, and then what got you started on this journey? Okay, so things about me. What got me started on this journey is having joined a million other programs and having them all fail me. Like I could be successful for a minute and then, you know, gain everything back and then gain extra back and all that unfun stuff. And so this program was kind of like my last little hope, you know. And the funny thing is, like, I think I've told you once before, I I had been watching your program for like three years before I finally (laughs) allowed myself to actually join because I was like, no, this is, there's just no way this is real. This is just, I'm just going to fail like everything else, you know, this is going to happen. No, it's not going to (laughs) happen. What changed for you? Do you remember? Between like, this is um, never going to work for me and like, maybe I'll give it a go. I think I just got desperate enough to just be like, you know what? I just have to do something because I'm just at a loss. I'm just completely out of desperation. You know, just, I know what prompted it. The price was going to go up again because <laughs> I watched it go up during that three-year process. And every time I'm like, and then it, I knew it was going to go up again. And then I was like... I got to just hurry up and do this because it's just going to keep going up from here. So good. And the, okay. Well, maybe we'll get to more of this in a minute, but like one of my favorite things that Sue often shares because every week I ask people just what's their experience like? Like what would they want to share with other people for people inside the program? And maybe at least four or five times, I think in your response, you've said, it's just so much easier than I thought. So you went yes. from like, it's not going to last. I'm not going to be successful long term. Like, I don't know, like if I'll actually be able to do it, right? Like the, all of those, yes. things, like, oh my God, it's so much easier than I thought have thought. And so I'd yes. love for you to share your experience in that and just what that means for you. Yes, it is exactly that. I well that was part of my hesitation is because you kind of said, oh, you do it naturally and it feels easy or whatever. And I was just like, nah, that's not possible. <laughs> and then like within the first week, I was like, what? This is easy. What? How? Huh? And like within the first week, I had control over food, which I've never in my whole life ever, ever, ever experienced. And let alone ever imagined that I could experience that within a week's time. That was just insane. Yeah. It was like, what? Like, I still can't believe how easy that was. <laughs> like, Yeah. Do you know what it was for you? Like what clicked or what was it in the program that you learned that made that I went 100% all in. I probably did what you weren't supposed to, though. I kind of fully immersed myself within a day or two (laughs) of all the videos and all the information because I wanted to know and I wanted to know now. And I mean, I went back. It's not like I just did it that one time. And then, you know, I went back and, you know, did it 
the way you should do it too. But like, I just wanted as much information as I possibly could so that the book made more sense to me, the 90 day book. And so just literally just telling myself, I'm just going to go all in. I'm going to go hundred percent. I probably went 110% at least, if not more. And I just like did all the work, literally just all the work, which people say sounds like work when I talk about it to other friends and things. They're like, oh, that sounds like so much. I'm like, dude, maybe 15, 30 minutes a day. You can't tell me you can't give that up for something that will change your life. <laughs> and like, I'm like, no. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, about it, I was like, is there another way to say the work or I know. Like, it is. I mean, what, I guess you do actually do something, but it's like yeah. for me when I do the quote unquote work, it's like yes. my day is just exponentially more enjoyable i just yes it's not even like exactly the way we think it is it's like yes I don't know what, what other word to you well yeah because like you dump your brain and you're just like whoa that just like unloaded so much stuff i didn't even know was loaded <laughs> yeah <laughs> and yeah it's just, it's just amazing it really just makes a difference it's crazy totally and so how much weight have you lost 32 pounds right now yeah and you lost what, like 30 pounds in almost 90 days? Yeah, it was probably 90 or under or just barely over. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like wild. I know, right? And, like for you to say, oh, yeah, I was like way easier than I thought. And it didn't really feel like work. And I lost 30 pounds in 90 days. Yeah, There's exactly. People that are going to be like, okay, cool for you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. So for someone that's thinking that, what would you say to them? that they're like, <laughs> I thought the same thing. <laughs> and I never thought I'd break through the 20 pound, like plateau, the 20 pound, like never happened, you know, or very rarely. And if it did, it came back tenfold. And then, you know, and this didn't and doesn't. And, you know, like, I mean, of course, naturally, you're going to fluctuate here and there a little bit, but nothing that's like this big, heavy, like, oh, everything went back, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so you said you've done other things before, right? Where you're successful and then you put gain some weight back and like, right. Yeah. I had those experiences. All those really strict things where you're only allowed to do this and that and you're not allowed to do anything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then your brain eventually is like, it just is like, no, this is not okay. <laughs> well, especially lifelong. You're like, I can't do this for my whole life long. You're insane. <laughs> so what do you like, think? Thank has- you has shifted for you that you haven't gained it back and that you like when I talk to you and when I coach you like it doesn't even yes. like there's a fear that it's coming back because the work that you do feeling the emotions actually learning how to process emotions is huge like it literally changes your entire mindset and, and just unloading your brain every day and then the allowing yourself to learn how to process the emotions like to feel them and see them objectively and just like because that kind of stuff would just take you all the way out, you know, take you down, or at least for me. And then so now it's just like, oh, I can just feel this emotion. So, you know, like, <laughs> and then move on from there, you know, like, instead of like being stuck there, like, oh, I have to feel this and I want to eat food <laughs> because I don't want to feel this and this sucks, you know, but now it's like, well, it doesn't really have to suck because, well, yeah, the emotion may not be great, but like, you can just move on from it. it doesn't have to like knock you out. <laughs> yeah, you don't need to add like physical discomfort of overeating. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I think just being able to do that versus using food as the crutch for it instead, or using you know whatever else. Because I mean, it could be food. It can be binge watching TV. I mean, anything. You know, like just being able to be capable of realizing that oh, I was doing those things just because I just wanted to get away, not because like. I needed those things. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. That would be. That's sometimes one of the surprising things, but I'm curious for you, for people is right when they're like, well, I don't know if I have the time to do this. Oh and yeah, exactly. And they don't realize how much time they actually waste in like even watching like an extra TV show that maybe they didn't really want to watch or like yep. just all the ways we try to like micro escape our days that we don't even know that we're doing. But once you start processing your feelings and allowing your emotions, it's like you just have so much more time because you're not. Oh my God. So true. Distractions. 
So true. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I know it's insane. Like, I, yeah, I was definitely one of the, I don't have time, I don't have time. And, and yeah, sure, I don't have all the time in the world. No one does, you know, but I definitely am able to manage so much more of it now and do a lot more of the things I enjoy. I was able to start drawing again every once in a while and dancing more. And, you know, yeah, you definitely all of a sudden find this time that you didn't know you had because your brain was just taking that time somewhere else for some reason like I don't even know how to explain it you just like yeah it's bizarre because you're like but I have the same 24 hours I always had (laughs) how am I fitting so much more into this like and the energy you know like I have so much energy so the things that took me forever to do are like oh boom done you know like I'm just so fast you know like It is such an odd experience because you kind of like look at your life and it's like you can have the same career or job or right the same kids and the same schedule and you're like so yeah like significant change but the way exactly thinks and operates it's like you just move through the day so much with more clarity and more focus and more deliberate intent that then you're not distracting yourself. Exactly. And so I don't true. Know what it was like for you, but for me, I used to be like a huge procrastinator and so I <laughs> put off, put off, put off things. Yep. And when I became naturally thin and just developed the skill of feeling my feelings and allowing emotions, it's like procrastinating wasn't really like a thing I had to struggle with. Yeah, that's true. I definitely experienced that as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because you just don't feel like doing anything when you feel like crap. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, you're just totally. like, eh. like <clears throat> now if I procrastinate, it's something like, well, I'd rather go dancing. So I'm just going to bypass today's chores and move them on to tomorrow. <laughs> like, <laughs> but it's not like, a, oh, I'm procrastinating because I don't feel like doing it and procrastinating because I want to do something more fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so good. And so there's something else that you shared with me at one point that I would love to hear more about. And then I'm, I want to go back to a couple of things that you other said as well, is that you said, I feel now like I'm capable of so much more. Yes. Yes. I think it's just the whole, like realizing that everything is on you, you know, like, I don't know you, when you start feeling your emotions and really like dump in your brain and stuff, you start realizing that you were your own obstacle. (laughs) (laughs) and then when you kind of recognize that you realize how much more possibility is out there that you never imagined possible I guess to say like because you know I mean you fail so many times with this diet and that diet and this diet and then you think oh well that's just impossible but then when you actually break through that barrier it makes you realize that other things can be possible too yeah like what do you think about for yourself do you have anything in particular Like for me, a lot of it is just being in a good place mentally, which that was the other bonus that happened with all this is I like joined to lose weight. That was my only thought process. My only goal was just, I want to feel better. I want to be healthy. I want to lose weight. And then I joined the program and I'm like, holy crap, my mental health is amazing. (laughs) Like what? (laughs) Like I did not know that joining a weight loss program was going to like do all this. Cause I mean, obviously yours isn't like any other. So it wouldn't, I would never have known that, but you know, most weight loss programs, they don't have anything to do with your mind, which is probably why we gain it all back. But this literally changes your mindset. It literally takes your negativity and turns it into positivity and like I used to just be so negative because I felt so physically horrible. And so like, you know, it's kind of hard to be positive and you're just constantly feeling like crap. And so, yeah, that was huge. Um, so for me, it was, it was just a big eye opener to just be like, wow, I am mentally in the best place I've ever been. Adversity is still adversity. It's still going to happen in your life. But like now I just move through it versus like stuck in it, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I actually, I don't remember if I told you, I may, yeah, I think I did tell you like about a month ago now, I stopped taking my antidepressants <laughs> and, and I wanted to wait, like I, I put a date on my calendar to make sure, because I don't know how long it takes to get out of your system before you may notice a difference, but I'm fine. <laughs> like, it's been a month. I think it would be out of my system by now. I mean, I'm doing great. <laughs> yeah. And do you uh, like have an experience like working with a doctor and like having them notice a shift or anything like that? No, I didn't even ask him. I just quit. (laughs) 
think you went for it. <laughs> yeah, I don't advise that though for other people. <laughs> Yeah, you're supposed to check with them first. But no, I, I had actually tried to quit a couple of different times. And so I knew from the doctor from previously that my particular type of medication, I could just dead stop. And it wouldn't have an adverse reaction other than, you know, the possibility of still having the mental health problems, you know, which obviously, I mean, you're human and they can come back or whatever. But you know, like, I just know how to process everything now. So I don't think the problem is gone. I just think that my ability to move through it is now there, you know? Yeah, totally. And when you're in the moment of moving through an emotion or working through an emotion, like what is that experience like for you now that's different where you do feel that sense of control versus maybe before not feeling that way? I guess just like now, just kind of just knowing that it's just an uncomfortable feeling that comes from a thought and that it just like, I can sit there and be with it for a while and just let go of it. It doesn't have to like stay like it's an option, you know, like you don't have to sit here with me forever. You can just sit here with me for a while. Let me kind of like think about it and, you know, objectively, like as we learn, you know, so just kind of think about it as, oh, it makes me feel this way or that way. Like I feel a little shaky or I feel a little tight or whatever. And then just kind of like, kind of talk yourself through like, oh, well, you know, I'm just going to let go of that tightness, kind of loosen myself up or whatever. And then just kind of just like relax. I'll take a couple breaths or whatever and just kind of move forward. It doesn't have to sit there and stay, you know, just like a feeling and everything we feel is a feeling. So it doesn't have to be a positive or negative feeling. It could just be a feeling that I have to feel right now. (laughs) Like, (laughs) And I used to, yeah, I used to be like, it has to be positive or negative, but now I realize it doesn't have to be positive or negative. It can just be a feeling period, you know? Yeah. And there's so much like sense of feeling powerful and like not powerful in the way I think we often think about it, but just like right. your own self ability to do that where you don't feel the like hopelessness and the trap yes. feeling as much. I know I used to experience anxiety <laughs> and just feel so devastated and trapped and hopeless. Like yes. I'm going to be here forever. And so then yes. even now when I'm in a not my favorite emotion, it's like, I know because I've practiced it so much and because I have the tools and the skills that I'm not going to be there forever. And like, yes, I'm the one creating it, which means I'm exactly solution for it, which means I could also be like, it's just not a problem that I'm experiencing it in a way yes. that doesn't like take you out. Yes, exactly. Yes. That's a big thing too. It's just realizing, does this really have to be a problem that I feel feeling? Like, <laughs> does it doesn't really have to be, you know, like, it's just like, this is just what I'm feeling. And that's what I'm feeling. I can do something about it. Or I can just sit with it and know that I can't do anything about it. If I, you know, in that moment or whatever, if I can't, whatever, but I can just sit there and feel it and move on, you know, so it's fine to take that moment, but it's easier to take that moment than take that whole rest of your life, (laughs) take it with you forever, you know? Yeah, Yeah. you're not like dragging it along with you all day. Yes, (laughs) exactly. It's It's no longer a big bag that I carry around with me. (laughs) That's so good. And so I'm curious, have you ever learned before anywhere? like a process to feel your feelings or allow your feelings? Or did you know that's why you had struggled with your weight? Nope. And I honestly, after your your program and learning all this and being where I'm at mentally, I am kind of honestly angry that like school should be teaching this stuff. Right. From like day one, like yes. kindergarten or preschool or whatever. This stuff should be like just in the syllabus for all humans in any form of education at all, because the entire world would be such a better place if we were all capable of just that one simple thing. And that's processing our emotions. I think about that all the time. I, yes. I'm like, how is this not something that everyone learns? Yeah. Or support? even knows that they need to learn. Because <laughs> like, <Right? laughs> like, we don't even know we need it until we somehow discover it. But I wish that the discovery was so much like more available for everybody. Yes. And it's so much simpler than we think, right? And there's Oh my God, so much. There's different <laughs> ways that we each kind of make it personal and we each find our way to allow our feelings and process our feelings, right? And I teach somewhat of a yes. structure so that you have a baseline to start with. 
But yes, I imagine all the time. I'm like, can you imagine if every single human knew how to feel their feelings? Yes, this me too. Would be, it wouldn't even look the same at all. There's no way. Exactly. I, I tell myself the same thing. I, I go through those same exact thoughts. I'm just like, and I even have told many friends about it. Like, this needs to be taught in school. This needs to happen everywhere. Like, how is this not something that we all knew we needed and like, we're forced to do like we for, we're forced to learn so much random stuff in school how is this not part of it like <laughs> all the stuff that we memorize and take a brain space just memorizing random stuff right and yes like, to be able to feel your feelings and i think there's so many people i'm curious what your thought is that they yeah. underestimate that skill where they're kind of like, well, I mean, sure. Yeah. Like that's fine. Your feelings like, or I don't have time for that. Or maybe it's not important or that's not really why I, you know, struggle with my weight or whatever, whatever oh, yeah. you're thinking. Oh, absolutely. You would never know until you actually processed and did it, did it. That's the problem is that you just wouldn't know until you've actually experienced it. Yeah. Because you you don't you don't because you don't know to to recognize you just don't know any better. <laughs> it's kind of like a fish so, yeah. in water that doesn't realize yeah. they're in water. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that was one of the big ahas, you know, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> yeah, I think about this all the time because I more than anything just want to help every single person and women yes. in particular, just like free up their mental energy because I just think about what we could all collectively do if this was just weight and feeling physically uncomfortable and just all of that was just not on our mind at all. And so I yes. think a lot about how can I articulate to people in words the freedom of not only being naturally thin, but having that mindset, now not fearing your emotions, not worrying about yes. physical discomfort, all of that, right? And it's kind of like the best way I can help people is to show them, to give them yeah. the opportunity to have the lived experience of it, right? Exactly. So before people even come into the program, right? I try to share that on the podcast, but it is a little bit like teaching someone to ride a bike or like reading a book on how to ride a bike. It's like, yeah, you can read it and understand. Yeah, because I, yeah. <laughs> on the bike, you don't have the muscle memory. Yeah, no. Yeah, because I like listened to the podcast for three years and I tried to apply little bits and pieces what I could. But yeah, it's not the same as actually having the breakdown and knowing exactly how to do it, you know, like how to observe and, and all that. It, yeah. I mean, I can listen to it, but yeah, it, applying it is definitely harder without a little bit of more help. So I'm definitely glad I joined because if I wouldn't have joined, I wouldn't have had that little bit of extra that really helped me understand the process. Do you have favorite parts? What do you mean? Like favorite like parts of... Like, were there favorite tools you learned or favorite parts of the program that you're like, oh, this is just like what helped me like keep going or go all in or like really listen to my body? I would say well, it's kind of like the whole process honestly turned into that. But if I were to say maybe break it down to one of the more favorites would probably be, I don't know, honestly, it feels like everything is <laughs> because like at least everything that's required daily in the book like, well, maybe not as much the buckets. I didn't feel like I needed those that much for very long before I was just like processing them fine, normal without needing to write it down. But like the brain dump, the models and the emotions, I would say are the top three because the brain dump just you didn't even know you were carrying all that until you put it down, which is crazy because it's just so weird to me that all you had to do was write it down and then all of a sudden it's not there anymore. <laughs> like it didn't make sense to me in my head, but it just like, I didn't even know I had all that. And then I just write it down and all of a sudden it's like your shoulders are lighter and your everything, your whole, everything is lighter. Your demeanor, your the way you carry yourself, everything is just somehow lighter just by writing down what's in your head. It's so weird to me. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then the models, I say what, what really helped me with the models is the way that I particularly did them, because I know you could do it about anyone you wanted, you know, and then one was a, a refresh my memory, the actual wording. One was a comfortable. No, that's the feelings were comfortable, uncomfortable. Oh, model serves you and model that doesn't serve you. So what I did was I took the model that didn't serve me, which was how I was actually feeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I took the same circumstance and made that my model that does serve me and turned it into what I should be doing. <laughs> yeah. 
So you don't need to change anything in your life. You're just changing the way you're thinking and feeling. Yeah, it was. Yeah, that was. A, I was another aha, I guess. That was very eye opening. You know. Yeah, that was another very good one. I apologize for the dog barking. <laughs> no, you're totally fine. Yeah, I think that that is so powerful to see. Right? Like, I don't need to change this thing in my life. Like. The thing can stay the same, right? The the people or the number on the scale even or right like day to day. When I change the way I think and feel, yes. like the number on the scale inevitably changes or I just have a yes. relationship with people in my life and myself and my body and all the things. Yes. I would say another thing that really helped with you in the process was because a lot of people, they tell you, oh, think positive. Think, they tell you, oh yeah, you're on the thing positive, but you can't actually do it unless you know how. Right. And so that was another big one for me is like, cause you teach us how. And so it's not just like, because the other thing is I learned because everyone says, oh, if you tell yourself you're beautiful every day, you'll start believing it. Mm-hmm. But what I learned from you is no, if you really don't believe you're beautiful, you can't tell yourself you're beautiful every day because you don't believe it. So that was a big one for me with you that really helped me because I used to try to do that. I'd be like, oh, I love myself. But I'm totally lying to myself. Yeah, your brain knows you're lying to yourself. <laughs> yeah. And so you taught us, no, if you don't believe it, you can't lie to yourself. And the little ladder, the taking baby steps, like, no, you can't tell yourself you love yourself, but you can tell yourself, I'd like to think that someday I could. You know, I mean, that was big for me. That was a, another big one for me. It was like, oh, that's so much nicer not lying to myself. <laughs> yeah. I sit there and be like, okay, so people tell me if I tell myself I love myself, I'm going to love myself one day. I'll tell myself I love myself as I'm looking at the mirror, laughing at myself, thinking that is such a crock of shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the problem with that is when you do that, you're really, and you don't believe it, right? When you're telling yourself, yeah. I'm myself, or I'm beautiful, and you don't believe it. Exactly. The stronger voice that's like, that's a crack of shit. There's no way. <laughs> that part of you gets louder and it gets yes, it does. So You're actually like doing the exact opposite. That you want yes. To doing. That's exactly, and that's exactly what I was experiencing before you is exactly that. I was experiencing that loudness getting louder and it getting worse instead of better. And I'm like, this is just not working (laughs) so yeah that was be another good tool you know the ladder and just being able to slowly work your way up to actually feeling that way yeah that was something I used a lot well with food but also just much more deliberately in my own personal relationship with alcohol where I was like I'd be like I don't want to drink and I was like no right do want to drink. <laughs> to not want to, right? Like wanting exactly. To, not want to is so different than lying to myself yes. every day and being like, I don't want to drink. I don't want a glass of wine tonight. I don't want a glass of yes. wine tonight. And I was like, no, the honest truth is I want a glass of wine tonight. I yes. do not want one, but I'm just going to lie to myself about it. Exactly. And you know, that actually brings up another thing that when you were talking about that whole I don't want to, I don't want to, that was another thing that you saved me from is I was always like, I don't want to feel bad. I don't want to, you know, do this or I want to do, I need to do this. Like I need to eat this better. or I need to do this better. I need to do that more instead of that brain being able to change that into, I want to feel amazing instead of just, you know, the, what I don't want to do or what I need to do because I feel forced that I need to do this. That would, I need to do this so I can lose weight. I need to do this. So I can no, because that just makes it worse. Yeah. But you're just, the more you tell yourself you need to eat better, the more you want to eat not better stuff, <laughs> or at least yes. that's been my experience. Yeah. <laughs> totally. So now instead of telling myself what I need to do this better, I need to do that, that better. It's more like, no, I just want to feel really good in my body. I just want to feel amazing. I just want to like be healthy. I don't want to feel so run down and exhausted all the time. And so that really makes a big difference. And don't get me wrong. I'll still eat things I want to, but I eat them in quantities that don't make me feel terrible. (laughs) So different when you're just thinking about how can I feel the way I want to feel in my body? You're just not focused on things you quote unquote can't have or shouldn't have. It's like, you don't even really think about them and then if you want something then you just eat a little bit 
Yeah, because like usually I would get like double or triple scoop of ice cream, right? Because it's like the biggest one and I love ice cream, right? Now it's like, oh, I just need a small dude because I'm good after that. I'm like, I don't I don't need all that. <laughs> like yes. because then I feel good because I ate the small and I don't feel horrible. If I eat the, the double or the triple, you know, and I eat it all at once, then I just feel awful. <laughs> like why have I never thought of this? I don't know. <laughs> yes. And what a different experience when you're losing weight, telling yourself, I just don't need all of that. And I don't want all of that yes. versus like, I can't have that. Yes. Yeah. That's a big one. Cause if I can't have it, I'm going to have it. That's the yeah. problem. Yeah. <laughs> like, don't you that's hundred percent. Yeah. If you tell me I can't have it, that messes me up way worse. Just, you know, you know, and that was the funny thing about me with my buckets was I would write down stuff like, and I probably, maybe this wasn't exactly the way you're supposed to do your buckets, but it worked for me. Yeah, it's <laughs> you know how you can write a few different things? Yeah, totally. Well, I would literally write like all the things <laughs> and I know it's terrible and it probably wasn't supposed to do it that way, but it actually worked for me because it just told my brain I can if I want to, but I never hardly did. So that was the beauty of it is it just telling myself I could made it like where it wasn't stressful and it was easy. And then, so even though I didn't eat it every day, I literally had candy and ice cream on my buckets every single day, but I didn't eat it every day. I would eat it whenever, once in a while, but it just had to have it on there to make me feel better. <laughs> oh, that's so good. I like, I love that you shared that because <laughs> Like the part of the buckets is showing yourself, right? You have options. And for some people, I even tell them like, leave the food blank and just really think about how you want to feel when you're done eating, right? Yeah, yeah. Eat, right. And then decide the food that you want to eat. And it's so funny. I've been thinking about this lately for myself. Like I fully believe and tell myself, like I can eat anything I want whenever I want. And I'm yes. Like, and just every day over and over again, I just never eat food that I know is going to feel uncomfortable. And it's because I just think more and more about how do I yes. really feel in my body? Yes. What does it feel like to feel amazing and going to bed feeling energized and waking up feeling energized, right? And all those things. Exactly. Yeah. Just telling myself I can just makes a huge difference in my brain. <laughs> it makes an extraordinary difference. I know. It really does. I think everyone has this a little bit, but I feel like maybe we, maybe we both have it strong, but my, yeah, I definitely have this of my brain is like <laughs> no one is going to tell me what I can. And yes, do. exactly. Same. I'm so definitely one of the try. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I think that's why a lot of the other things failed because they kept know this, know that, know this, know that, and the more that they tell me that, the more I'm like, screw you, I want this and that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, definitely. Why I very deliberately never tell anyone you can. <laughs> have something right yes how would I know I'm not the one that's in your body so I don't know what it's like when you eat those things yeah just, that's true it's so unuseful I think to tell people it is extremely unuseful things like oh yeah absolutely yeah like I said the, the the program I tried right before you oh my gosh that was literally the worst you couldn't even have like it was bad enough you couldn't have anything with sugar in it you couldn't have anything with flour, no sugar, no flour. You couldn't even have fake sugar. So not even like sugar-free gum. Are you kidding me? It's not even going to give me calories. You know, like if it is, it's like maybe three calories or something insane, but like, you know, yeah, like you can burn that off smiling, <laughs> like, yeah. I, but yeah, it was I, bad. I understand the thought process behind no sugar and no flour. I tried a program and I think I lasted, I was already like a couple pounds away from my naturally thin weighter. I was there already. It wasn't even really right. close weight. I was like, I'm just going to do this and, and see what it's like. And the ironic thing is, I don't really eat much sugar and flour to begin with. But the fact that someone was telling my brain I couldn't have it. Made you want to more. Was, I was a very angry individual. <laughs> I'm like, I know I'm the one creating my anger and I know I'm the one creating the rebellion, but I don't even yeah. care. I just was like, yeah. no, it just did not serve me at all. For that is exactly, exactly what my brain does to me too. Yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. That's freaking hilarious. This is the thing that I think is the funniest is like, I don't think about sugar and flour really at all. But right, I can't have it and I'll think about it all the time. Like, yeah, exactly. No, it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> <laughs>
that is that's that's great <laughs> now you also I know from some of the coaching calls like you would come and you'd be like okay here's what I noticed in my workbook and you seemed like you were very diligent in doing the work I was completing the workbook Can 100% you tell me what had you commit to that and what then was your experience like what benefit then did you get out of taking that and doing that I think one of the biggest things, which is kind of ironic and funny, is what got me to commit so deeply was one of your videos. <laughs> I don't remember which one it was, but it talked about basically if if you want to be successful in this, you have to go all in type of thing. I mean, the wording was obviously different, but that was what I got in my brain from it. <laughs> and so I think it was just because I just really wanted results. I was really sick and tired. I was to the point where I was, it was just complete desperation. I was sick and tired of never getting there and never believing I could get there. And I just was like, I know, I remember not to, it was the whole, if you, you could get your money back, but you have to do it exactly what you're supposed to do basically. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, it was kind of almost my negativity that really prompted that now that I think about it, because it was like, I want my money back and this shit don't work. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Totally. <laughs> and so I was like, I got to make sure I'm doing everything that this thing says because I want my money back. It was more like I was honestly more believing that I was going to get my money back than I was believing I was actually going to be successful. <laughs> oh my God. That just made me that is a little right so for everybody listening that's not in the program right when you join i give you your money back right if you don't have success but i'm like you gotta actually do the program to yeah exactly which is fair right? and, and so i do sort of think about the money back is like the money back guarantee having it almost like ensures that you do the work you actually do it yeah and then I'm like, you're obviously going to be successful because all you need to do is like do the workbook and watch the videos. And like, yeah. Exactly. So I love that that is how your brain used it. That's awesome. That is true. It was totally like, I'm just going to get my money back and this isn't going to work like everything else. <laughs> I'm just going to do it all. I'm going to prove to myself it's not going to work. And here we yeah, go. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> that was really funny. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> That's so funny because just like when I was creating the workbook and creating the money back guarantee, I was thinking about like, how can I just make it inevitable that if someone, right. all they do is this, right? They're inevitably going to have success. And like, I do yes. firmly believe it's like doing the brain dump, observing yes. how your body feels, feeling your feelings. You can't help but lose weight. Like it just, yes. it has to happen. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, you're right. You're spot on with all the stuff you said in the video that were the, how people get there the, the fastest. And that was it. And the feeling of feelings, that was literally how I got there the fastest. That is definitely the biggest part. Yes. A hundred percent. So what yep. would you say to pass through? Pass through the <laughs> I really want to do this, but I'm not yeah. sure. This feeling my feeling things. I don't know about that. Let's not lose the weight. Like that version of you, what would you say to her now? I would say, oh my God, girl, freaking don't take three years to join this program. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to me, I am from the future. <laughs> you must understand. <laughs> you have wasted three years of your life that you could have been naturally in for life. <laughs> and off antidepressants, mind you. So you better get your butt in gear <laughs> and freaking just join because I'm telling you that you're going to be fine. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so good. It is just like, I just love it hearing this and sharing this because it is such a lie that it has to be hard. Yes. I, yes, it's, it is. And it's yeah. still hard for me to believe that it, it really wasn't hard. <laughs> like I still have trouble like accepting that in my brain, you know, it still tries to come in and argue with me, <laughs> yeah. but it's like, well, I mean, it is proof right there. <laughs> like how can I even argue this? And then like, I've proved it. Yeah. You said before you worked through kind of like a 20 pound plateau and then there was yes. another plateau that you yes. experienced before yep. what allowed you to work through those and not go kind of backwards and gain the weight back and just kind of keep moving forwards. I would say probably the coaching reminding me that they're just thoughts and that they don't have to be true. Cause that, that was, that was another big one is realizing that you don't have to believe the BS you're feeding yourself in your brain. Yeah. <laughs> That was another one of your awesome like tools is just 
like, yeah, well, that's a thought in my head, but does it need to be true? Like, does it really need to be true? Does it serve you for that thought to be true? You know, like, so yeah, no. (laughs) I think that was, yeah, getting the coaching and being reminded, honestly, because yes, I knew that tool, but I forgot about it in the moment. Because sometimes when you're in the moment, you don't remember which tools to use. Totally. <laughs> so the when life coaching it, definitely, it. yeah. The life coaching definitely is a big deal because it, it just kind of helps remind you the stuff you already know, which is really funny because you already know it and you don't even know realize you already know it. A hundred percent. It's why yes. I get coached every Yeah, time. that's why I still come. Like I only missed the one because I had a meeting with my bosses and then I watched the video after. So yes. So I didn't technically I missed the live, but I still was there. <laughs> yeah, but even like hearing other people get coaching, I don't know what it's like for you, but when I listen to other people get coaching, I'm like, oh yeah, that's right. Like right? Our brains forget things oh, yeah. and we just have to remind it, even of the same thing over and over again. Like one of my favorite things I tell myself is like my brain is not a truth teller. Like mm-hmm. just because it's thinking this thought that's making right? me free, feel a certain way doesn't mean it's telling me the truth. And then I'm like, yes, oh, that's right. I just forgot. Exactly. Yep. hundred percent. Oh, so good. Okay. I have two more questions for you. And then if there's yeah. anything that's on your mind that you want to share, what is sure. when you said, I just like, you got a lot out of the live coaching. Sue is someone that's always asked for coaching when she's there. Some people don't always. <laughs> They're maybe like nervous or scared or yeah. I don't know, or maybe there's nothing that's on their mind. They're just there. But what allowed you to show up in that way? Because like, I could tell you were like all in, like, I'm doing what you told me to do. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to listen to the videos. And I'm going to get coached. Let's go. Yeah. That's honestly, that's what prompted me. It was just like, I'm going all in because I want results. I want that. And I want to believe, I want to believe, even though I didn't yet, I wanted to believe. Mm-hmm. So I was just, and yeah. And you know, like to say to people, Doing the live coaching, I had to get out of my comfort zone for that. I don't like seeing my face on the video and being a part of it in that way. I forced myself to step out of that comfort and go all in. And that was part of it too. You have to be willing to be uncomfortable a little bit. And But learning how to process your feelings really helps with learning how to be okay with being uncomfortable too, though. (laughs) I was just, yeah, I had to be willing to step out of that. And I do, I hope that the people that don't get the coaching are at least like sending you emails or getting onto the the bulletin board area or doing something because it is such a huge difference to be able to like really get that feedback and, and get help. And, and like you said too, like every time I'm on the live call, like, 95 96 percent of the time whoever's getting coached on something i'm totally like oh yeah yeah oh yeah me oh yeah uh-huh. <laughs> like, you know, like, yes. totally just like, and i'm just thinking it all in too and then when it may not necessarily apply directly to me in the same exact way i think oh well how does this apply to me and because you can pretty much make any of that stuff apply to you if you really stop and think about it and so i really like just soaked all of it in even when it wasn't my coaching specifically that i was being coached Yes. Oh, so good. And what's on the other side of that uncomfortable feeling for you? Like when you're uncomfortable. Progress. (laughs) Possibility. (laughs) Yeah. Progress and possibility. That's the only way to get there. Honestly, Mm -hmm. you have to be uncomfortable. Either you just can't make progress. Yeah. Because then you're stuck in your old brain. The whole point is to get into the new brain. (laughs) Yeah. And then it's like you do it a couple of times, right? You feel discomfort, whether it's on a live call or it's in your job or it's in a relationship or it's talking to someone like great or in your relationship with food or whatever it is. Like as you feel the discomfort and you see yourself on the other side and you see the magic or the possibility, right? And all the things on the other side, you're like, oh, it's actually not. First of all, it doesn't feel as bad as I thought it was going to feel. Yeah, yeah, that's true. (laughs) <laughs> you're so much on the other side, you're more and more willing to do it again. And I feel like my thought potentially about you is that that's what allows you to see that you're capable of so much is because yes. you've seen yourself go through discomfort and what's available to you on the other side that you just can't help but see that it's inevitable for you to create whatever you want. Yeah, true, true. Very true. Well, it's been so enjoyable talking with you. Is there anything else that you want to share? Anything else that's on your mind? 
something came to my mind and then I lost it <laughs> like, like a second ago. I literally had something in my brain. I guess have to say just, yeah, you just really have to be willing to embrace the process. Like, and even if you don't believe in yourself, you eventually will if you just follow the process. <laughs> because, yeah. For people, who say, you can you can borrow Sue's belief and my belief that you can do it. That's Yeah, that's totally. Like, you can just borrow my belief. You might want to believe you can do it. You don't even need to believe 100% for sure I'm going to do it. Yeah, like, I mean, I didn't. <laughs> like, let the process get you there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's true. Like, you don't even have to believe. You just have to, like, just be willing to just take the steps. And they're such small, simple steps, although they may not seem simple in the beginning because you're learning and uncomfortable, but it really is. It's it's the way that you break it down for us. Because, oh, that's what I want. So the book that you recommend, I forgot the name of it, something about changing your mind or something. What is it? Oh, is it the Joe Dispenza book, Breaking the Habit on Yourself? Yes, that's the one. Breaking the Habit of Being Yourself. I got that from the library and I had been reading it. And I have to say, that is a very good read. However, I am so glad to have you (laughs) because that read is very complicated in my brain. It is a very good read and it's really good. It was still great information. I have no regrets reading it. But having you there to have actually taught me how to really process these things without all that like major like big words <laughs> that are in the book and stuff really made a difference for me because I feel like I'm applying the things from the book but because of you showed us an easier way so honestly I feel like your way was easier than the book's way and it's really like made it possible for me well, I'm so glad that's been your experience and for yes. everyone listening we had talked at one point about sometimes the book isn't in the program, but I read the book right yeah. now, being yourself by Joe Dispenza. And it's a great book. And I love his work. And I do a lot of his meditations and all yes. those things. But the book, I've read it a couple of times, because the first time I was like, what right? in the world? It's <laughs> like into quantum physics. And so it's yes. not like the most easy. It's not like a, yes. a lounging, quick, easy read. It like takes some concentration, at least. You did. It really does. And it's challenging with my ADHD to focus on that kind of concentration. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But no, the information was very good. It was just, I think that if it was less information for me, it would have been better yeah. because I can only process so much yeah. that big, big stuff. But no, I think the fact that I had your way just really, I was like, okay, this is what she's doing. She learned it from this. Or maybe you didn't learn it from that. You already knew, but definitely you were applying things that made it possible for me to apply without fully being able to completely take in that book, you know, like to fully understand the process. So you made it possible for me to be able to process that. So that was big for me. I am, I'm grateful for that. So glad. And that's so funny because I did, I actually created the program before I read that book. Wow. So you already knew you were ahead of the game. (laughs) There's a lot of of people that I've learned from that I think they, they all have a similar like collective thought process. They just articulate it in a different way. Yeah. And and that's exactly it. Yeah. And the more I learn from other people and myself and my own journey and from all of you, I'm like, there really is like a way of each of us finding how to feel our feelings as like the core of changing anything that we want in our life. And how do we do that in a way that, that is easy for us and simple for us to do? Yes. That was another big one is just knowing that really being able to recognize and realize the reality of what you said, all our actions are a reaction from our thoughts. That's huge because You just don't realize how much crazy thoughts are floating around in there until you start writing this stuff down. (laughs) And how much it negatively affects your own self with your own ridiculous thoughts. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, that was like, that's a big one. That's a very big one. Totally. (laughs) Okay. And then last question for you. Yeah. Do you have a current, whether or not it's now or it was like a current feeling that you thought was so uncomfortable or so hard to work through that now you're like, I totally got this. So do you have like an uncomfortable feeling that isn't nearly as uncomfortable as maybe you thought? And then do you have a favorite emotion? My 100%, probably the most uncomfortable feeling I was constantly feeling was depression. Mm -hmm. And being, you know, that's why I was on the meds. So honestly, that was huge. Just now I can just like, 
realize that I can just like when I did have like I think when I had my worst day was when my dog killed a chicken that was really devastating Mm -hmm. (laughs) that was very devastating that like because I knew the chicken and I was in love with the chicken and I would pet him and love on him and and I literally and he was a baby and I just lost my mind but I cried about it I felt my feelings I was depressed about it for a minute but then I like wrote down what I was feeling so it like it was weird I just took it away you know what I mean so it was like the brain dump it literally I just wrote down everything that was in my brain with the way I was feeling about it and it just took it all away and so I was able to yeah get past that and and that was like a constant emotion for me so definitely it's 100% changed my life I can completely move through the feeling depression now and my favorite feeling has always been and probably will always be love. <laughs> I love my animals. I love my babies. I love my friends. You know what I mean? Like, I love so much. <laughs> so that would definitely be like my favorite emotion that's constantly there. <laughs> A lot, A lot of love. Love, love. <laughs> definitely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing your journey and your words of wisdom. Definitely. Help so many people just like believe that it's possible for them. That's what I'm hoping. That's why I was willing to do it. I was like, because, you know, like I said, this is not my comfort zone either. And I want to be able to help too. You know what I mean? Like if I can make one person move forward with the way that I'm feeling and what I went through, that right there would be like an amazing thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. of course it'd be more amazing. It was more than one, but if I can change one person's life just because they listened to this, you know, like yes. that would be huge. So yeah, yes. I definitely was happy to do it. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. And thank you for all you've done for us. <laughs> so welcome. <laughs> Friends. If you are loving what you are learning here on the podcast, you have to come check out my Naturally Thin for Life program. It is my on-demand lifetime access program where I teach you brand new concepts not taught here on the podcast. And I will walk you through exactly how to implement all of the tools I teach you here so that they become just a part of you. You will learn exactly how to understand your specific brain and your specific body so that you become naturally thin for the rest of your life and you no longer struggle with your weight. Inside of the Naturally Thin for Life program, you can also receive live help so that you consistently make progress and reach your goal. I will teach you how to accelerate your naturally thin journey in a sustainable way so that the change becomes permanent. The best part is that it's risk-free. You either love it or I will give you your money back. If you are ready to finally be naturally thin for life, join us at lauradixoncoaching.com forward slash work with me That's L-A-U-R-A-D-I-X-O-N coaching.com and click on the work with me tab. I cannot wait to see you there.